What? Oh. Auto hill descent. So, I've been thinking about that keyboard talk I did at that conference and uh, thinking about how I could have made it better and what um, feedback I guess I would like. And I think at this point, with what I'm working on, the thing I would like the most, the most rocks and bits and stuff? What is that? The feedback I would like the most is <clears throat> what should a, a smart keyboard be? And I know the, the smart prefix is kind of overdone at this point, but how is it that in... This was in my notes, I don't believe I said it, but like, how is it that in this age of uh, smart televisions, smart refrigerators, smart crock pots, our keyboards are still dumb? How is that okay? <laughs> like, how often do you use a crock pot? <laughs> And how often do you use your keyboard? And it's like I'm taking crazy pills here. It's like, hey guys, you know how millions and millions of people use cars every day? Well, this makes the car twice as good. Oh yeah, no, we're fine. But it is twice as, it's way better than, than it was. No, we're good. Like, guys, look at me. Look at all the cool stuff I'm doing. It's twice as better. <laughs> We're fine. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's just kind of weird, I guess. Um, <laughs> so I'm thinking about this, and <clears throat> as I'm making a uh, uh, a little, I guess it's a computer, uh, based off the, the microcontroller. I'm trying to use Arduino. I'm trying to keep it Arduino so that we can change um, <clears throat> chips. Yeah, so we could change, uh, you know, chips and footprints, and it's, you know, the metacode transfers a little bit better. But the idea is to set it up, I'm pretty sure, yeah. The idea is to set it up so that the keyboard provides input to one of three outputs, I guess. Uh, one output would be updating... Um, Interfacing with the keyboard itself, with the display, with the microprocessor, with the computer that's built into the keyboard, uh, and interfacing with the display, you know, uh, store data, set timers, play Tetris, who cares? So that, you, you use the keyboard to interface with that, and then you flip it so that the keyboard now interfaces with whatever is connected via Bluetooth. So that could be your phone, could be your PC, whatever. Then you plug it in, and that's an alternative input. You could be sending that input, you could be sending the keystrokes to the computer that is plugged in right now. Or you can flip it to, let me, let me just give you a use case, okay? Uh, <laughs> so you're typing on your computer, you have your keyboard in front of you, it's plugged into your computer. You're typing on your computer. You get a text message. You look over at your phone, it's your wife, you're going to respond. Uh, <clears throat> so you flip the, flip the, you press a keystroke or flip a switch or whatever, and now, since your device is already synced via Bluetooth to your phone, you type and you're typing on your phone. And you finish your text message, you hit send. And then you think, well, uh, you know, maybe the text message to, was to remind you to do something in an hour to call the doctors in an hour or something. So then you flip your input to the keyboard when you look down at the little display, the little display on the keyboard, and it says, you know, it's awaiting your command. Um, so it starts on the main page, it tells you what, what your to-do items are, you know, what things are coming up soon. Um, and you flip the page to add a new uh, to-do item or, or even set a new timer probably a timer. I'm trying to figure this stuff out. Um, so flip the page over to set a timer. Set your timer for, you know, you're pressing up and down, one hour, enter. Message for this timer, call doctor, enter, set. And then it goes back to the main screen. And now you flip your input again, and it's going back to your computer, and you continue working. 
So that's the, the what is it, the, uh, the customer story. Is you're able to do that, right? So, that is quite possible on uh, just the Blue Fruit Feather 32U4. Uh, apparently the ESP 32s are pretty well documented and pretty in pretty good shape right now. But the 82 whatever ones, uh, perhaps not. Uh, <clears throat> oh, this is pretty cool. These pencils. Uh, I'll, I'll try and get to those. So that's your, your story, your user story, is you, you are able to flip your input back and forth very easily. Uh, I guess the next part of the story is uh, the rest of the story. Uh, it's time to go to, you, you call the doctor and they say, well, we can see you right now and that works or who knows, whatever. It's the end of the day, who cares? You unplug your keyboard, you take it with you, uh, you you're driving in the car, and then your keyboard goes bleep bleep, look at me instead of the road, and you go, oh, oh let me just... Oh. No, uh, I was looking at voice modules. It would be cool to have it have a little voice module or something like that <laughs> uh, to give you like a dentist one hour or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> uh, or, or even like a, a voice memo. That's that's pretty doable actually. There's modules, uh, voice voice chip modules that are very well fleshed out. Strangely, if you want to make a voice recording device that you can play back and you know erase and, and all that stuff, it's cheaper to buy proto kits. And it, if you want to buy something in a package, it's stupid expensive. I don't understand why. Uh, but anyways, you know you're driving home and your keyboard starts to beep, and uh, when you when you safely and uh, at a stop sign, you, you pull over and turn off the vehicle, of course, uh, and then look at the display, and it says, don't forget to pick up milk. And you're like, oh yeah, the milk. Um, and you press a button to snooze that. And then you turn and drive to the uh, uh, store, you get the milk, and then you get back in your car, and your keyboard's going beep, 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 and the light's going off. And you pick it up and it says, don't forget milk, you know, snooze, timer, uh, the alarm has been going off for 8 minutes and 40 seconds. And you go, ah, okay, dismiss, you know, close. <clears throat> then you continue on home and get home and you got the milk and everything. And then it starts, uh, you hear beeping or buzzing and you look at it and it says, battery low, battery low, warning. Uh, and then you plug it in and it charges overnight or, you know, gets enough of a charge in, in this scenario. <laughs> uh, and then in the morning it beeps. It's your alarm clock. It's your everything. It's your kitchen sink. It's got all the things. Uh, so something like a, a hub is pretty s s s s easy to tack on, uh, but not necessarily easy to uh, implement on the device itself. Uh, uh, setting up something that has a, <clears throat> like an Arduino Duet would do pretty good at that. Uh, but the Duet is kind of overkill and apparently not super well documented. That's changing. Uh, but it seems like there's pretty good support for it. See, that, that's the other thing though, is, is if I'm making, this, so, oh, I'm sorry. Part of that, that user interface with the display swapping thing and plugging into the keyboard, I think I I think I tweeted a picture of that. I don't know, you can see what it looks like. It looks like a mess right now, but basically the keyboard has, uh, you know, you remove the brain and then uh, you can change it out and do something else with it, give it different code. Um, so I was messing around with this just plugged in some header pins to uh, the display module into a separate to an UNO controller and I was messing around with the UNO and the display and trying to get all the interface worked out and I did pretty good um, but I hit a really uh, sticky point where I was just like what in what is going on here and uh, it, it seemed to have to do with uh, setting up large pointer large arrays and I wasn't sure if I was setting them up correctly or incorrectly or or if memory allocation was off. So I set it up as an array of pointers and then it still didn't work. And I was very confused by it. And everything I 
looked at looked at about it seem to indicate that a multi dimensional multi dimensional arrays in C is just kind of kind of funky, especially if you're doing pointers or you know as far as I was concerned it was you were abstracting it no matter what but it it had just had some weird problems and I was like ah I'm done with this you know stayed up till two in the morning trying to hit my head against the wall doing it. I tried, to, I tried to go to sleep and then failed. I'm like, I'm done with this. And I go to bed and I'm like, but what if I set it up like this? And then I went and, and it, it compiled, but it still crashed. So, I was like, and then I spent another hour working on it. Good, goodness, goodness. Um, so then... I looked up more information on it, and I'm like, I don't know, and I talked to my boss about it, because he's a actual, you know, like an actual professional, uh, <laughs> and he had some ideas, and I'm like, just talking about it actually helps, which is part of why I do these, um, these blags, uh, and I realized, I'm like, okay, so at its most simple, you know, I want to have all these nice abstractions so that it's very simple for the, the programmer to pop in and be like, let's move this key over there, done. Um, but that's inherently complex for, you know, possibly for the chip, I guess, maybe. Um, so I, I backed it all out and then set it up so that it was just, all the structs were instantiated directly into the multidimensional array, which is something I've never thought I'd say before, but that sounds awesome. I, in, I, <laughs> I instantiated all the structs directly into the interdimensional array. Interdimensional. <laughs> The multi-dimensional array. <laughs> Interdimensional array. Love it. Oh, man. Computers are awesome. <laughs> so, <laughs> so basically, that had zero pointers, uh, zero memory allocation issues, you know, potentially. And it still crashed. And I'm like, okay, this is just, like, big arrays. And then when I started looking that up, I realized that the, uh, the vanilla... I squared C interface for the SSD, uh, the SSD 1306 display drivers, uh, the 126 by 60, 126, 128 by 64 display, uh, running I squared C, like, preps the entirety of the, uh, the memory, sp the display in RAM, and then pushes it, so the whole thing was sucking up, like, 600, uh, bytes of data just to run the display and that's a lot <laughs> so and it didn't show up at you know it was it was allocating at runtime so <clears throat> I couldn't even see that it was running out of space uh, but that was the problem so someone identified this issue and created a uh, a like a just-in-time loader and for just ASCII characters on the uh, for the same board or for the same display so I loaded that and it's way smaller and I was able to, <laughs> to load all the arrays and stuff like that and get everything going so it was really cool uh, like after I got past that problem uh, so with that in mind I'm, I'm very uh, aware of the constraints that the small controller is is placing me under and it makes me want to get a Arduino, uh, a Due or a Mega, which has the same foot, fo which share the same footprints. Uh, although I think a couple pins are off. But the idea of like, well, I'll just, uh, you know, the whole point of going with Arduino was so that it's compatible, so you can switch uh, chips if you want, and the Arduino Meta programming language will just handle that for you. However, that is not. Like, if I set it up to run with 32K of flash, obviously you're not going to drop it on an Uno. It doesn't have the space. So, I'm kind of waffling back and forth on whether or not to get the big one with the big memory. Uh, part of me wants to be, you know, frugal about it and be very nitpicky about my bits and my bytes. But, I don't understand why there should be any level of constraint, really. Um, it's all kind of, I mean, I, I like, I like it technically. I like the idea of doing it as an engineer, like, yeah, let's, let's make it fit. That's cool. You know, can it run doom? <laughs> but, 
but <laughs> for active development and just like messing around and getting something like done to market, published, shipped, uh, just give me the extra space, you know, forget about it. Uh, worst case scenario, they make, worst case scenario, I guess, uh, they make do, uh, not do a, uh, they, the mega 2560s in like a, a micro board format with a USB mini connector, by the way, which I love. I love the USB mini connector. The micro connector sucks. Uh, new best friend mini connector. <laughs> I can't even remember that meme. No. The memes are lost. Like Pepe's in the rain. Uh, <laughs> anyways, it had something where, you know, you can make a smaller footprint if you want to. But now I have all these pins, and now I have all this room, and now I have all this memory, and now I have uh, a bit more speed. If you go to the Dewey, obviously it's way more speed, but <sighs> but with the Mega, it's a bit more speed. So now I'm thinking of like, what should it be? What is the maximum? Like, what what would a what would a smart keyboard have? And no, it's not going to connect to the internet. And no, there's not going to be an uh, an online service that updates your keyboard through the cloud that you have to pay a monthly subscription fee to. Um, you know, what is that level of interface that you can still uh, interact with the keyboard easily and have it do cool stuff while tempering that by making it not full retard capitalist. <laughs> Right, I'm actually like ready to leave, so I should stop recording. <laughs> uh, let me know what yeah yeah. Let the the six people that actually watch this, let me know what uh, what you would want in a smart keyboard. Like what if I said smart keyboard, what would you immediately think it would do, and what would you think it should do? Um, just spitball. Like throw features out there. Also weird interfaces. I've been thinking about that. Like dials and sliders and stuff like that just any kind of uh, interface for something like that stuff where you like wave your hand over it in order to do something eh, i don't know control scroll by the prox uh, ultra ultrasonic proximity sensor over your keyboard and like playing your keyboard like a theremin <laughs> theremin module qmk supports it actually but <laughs> the support is not very good right now <laughs> No, QMK is awesome. QMK is awesome. <laughs> All right, let me know. <laughs>